What's going on everybody? Today we're doing another repair tutorial. Um, today we're going to be working with the Xbox 360 console. Um, this is kind of going to be similar to how I did the original Xbox. Uh, I'm going to have two different videos um, and uh, it's kind of be kind of going to be two-parted. Uh, this is kind of the first stage. Um, this will work sometimes, but there's plenty of times where it won't work too. So um, this is not a guarantee fix. This is just uh, kind of you hoping that you don't have to spend the money on a new laser and things of that nature. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be uh, cleaning out the disk drive of the Xbox 360. Uh, I've got a Samsung, which is the first one that was put in the Xbox 360, fat versions anyways. Um, I've got the Samsung here with me. Uh, Really, it's going to be about the same for all four of the fat versions, and it's not even going to be all that different with the slim either. Uh, just kind of a little bit different on how you take them apart and stuff. Um, I'll try to go over any differences I know between the four different fat version drives, uh, which is the this one, the Samsung, and then the Hitachi, and then the BenQ, and then the uh, Lidon drive. Um, to get started, what you'll need is some Q-tips. I've got quite a few. I actually probably only need like one. So don't know why I did that. Um, and then, uh, oh, I use a glass cleaner, and I always try to uh, get rid of the myth um, because a lot of tutorials I've seen either use water or more than anything I've seen rubbing alcohol, and both of those choices are terrible choices. Um, water being the absolute the absolute worst thing you could use to clean out a disk drive. Um, rubbing alcohol would be next. Um, the next uh, the next thing that can be used, although I wouldn't typically use it because you do have to be careful. Uh, careful, excuse me, is um, nail polish remover, and that is something I would only use really if, for instance, you somehow spilled drink or something or soda inside. Uh, and so you've got some nasty sticky stuff on on some areas um, because that'll help kind of break it down a lot easier and it means you won't have to quite scrub as hard but I use window cleaner for one reason it's streak free um, whenever you're cleaning off a laser uh, if you use water or rubbing alcohol there's chemicals and there's you know there's different things in the water and there's different things in rubbing alcohol and so once it dries it will leave a little film of whatever was inside of it on that laser lens and therefore you know I'm not completely cleaning it um, so it's always a better idea to use glass cleaner alright uh, also you know you're going to need the um, some people call them electronic screwdrivers some people call them jewelry screwdrivers uh, they're just really small uh, that way you can um, easily get to the small screws in it uh, I believe on all four drives, uh, there's four screws, and it's pretty simple. You know, you just look for them and then take them apart. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. Oh, uh, before I really get started, um, uh, I've already obviously just got the drive by itself. If you're not sure how to open the console, um, I do have another tutorial for how to open uh, the Xbox 360 FAT. And as you can see, the link has popped up now. So if you need to get to this point and not sure how, just check out that tutorial first. All right. Now back to unscrewing this and getting the casing off of it. Okay. Always try to put your screws in something with four sides because they roll away and uh, it's it's a real pain in the butt to. Uh, lose a few of those screws. Alright, now we're just all you have to do is just fry each part off. As you can see they a little jiggle and this simply just slides right off. I'll set that aside. And and up to now all the drives for the Xbox 360 fat are gonna work the exact same. I mean it's it's gonna look different and the screws are gonna be a little bit different size but it all works the same way. Unscrew the screws and pop the two pieces of shell off. Um, as you can see, here's the laser, which is what we're going to be messing with. Um, 
we're going to be cleaning the, the little limbs off, which is right in the middle. Um, we're also kind of clean if there's any other dusty areas, we'll clean some of that out too because um, if you just clean the laser lens and then you have dust caked up all inside of it, that dust is going to easily just get right back on that laser within a, maybe a week or two. Um, so you want to try to get all the dust out that you can. Alright. For this model, and it works different for some models, uh, right here there's a white piece of plastic. Um, and this is how we're going to actually eject the tray. Um, on the other models, there is, uh, in this general area where I've got the screwdriver, there's going to be a, a piece of black plastic that protrudes out. And instead, you're going to simply take it and kind of wedge it and push it out, and that will eject the tray. But for this version, what we're going to do is just simply slide that white piece you see right there out. And as you can see, it kind of pops the tray out. You don't have to do that if you're only going to clean the laser lens, but uh, we're going to do that just to make sure there's no other dust and uh, nothing else to, uh, you know, get out of there and everything. And there is a little bit here, so we'll uh, we'll clean that out as well. Now, first things first, this is kind of a spray bottle, uh, so it's not the best way. So just kind of spray a little bit. Don't get too overzealous with how much you put on there. And if you do get some, kind of try to squeegee it off. But again, don't touch the end. Don't touch the end of it with your finger, um, because again, you can get something from your hands on there that can be left on the laser lens. Um, so, anyways, all we're going to do after you've got a little bit on there is just clean it. You don't want to put too much pressure. Um, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, as you can see, once you push it on there, the little the actual lens is kind of loose. Um, and you know it's definitely not very secure so if you put too much pressure you can easily just knock it right out of there. Um, then kind of go around the outside casing of it and kind of just rub all that off and get all that out of the way. Um, once, you've, once you've got that you might want to hit it a second time too uh, just to make sure you get everything. And I go ahead and take the dry end, the opposite end of the Q-tip and I go ahead and uh, dry it one good time and then hit it one last time with the uh, window cleaner side. And then that way you can just make sure you get everything off of there that you can. Um, next what we'll do is as you can see around, well, you might be able to see, there's some dust in these areas and um, right here on this side and everything. Well, uh, what you can do next is just kind of take this and you can just do it however, you know, just kind of get a lot of that out of there as much as you can. Um, if you don't feel comfortable sticking it in there where you can see the uh, actual electronic parts, you don't have to. Uh, the main thing is the upper parts here where it can easily be transferred right back onto the laser. Because, uh, like I said, you know, it could just all fall back down and cause the same problem that you're trying to fix here within a week or two. Okay, so I got a lot of that out, and that's really all this part is, and it's just getting everything cleaned off um, and getting getting it in as good a condition as as you can. Um, like I said, you may find that this does not work, and if that's the case, your next step is going to be to actually replace the laser. Um, typically, it depends on what drive, uh, different drives use a little bit different lasers. I do know that the Samsung and Hitachi use the exact same laser. Um, this I haven't ever been, it's kind of, to me it's a little iffy because I, there have been times with the BenQ and the Lidon where I've used um, a BenQ in a Lidon and a Lidon uh, laser in a BenQ drive and it's worked, but there's been times where I've done that and it hasn't worked either. So. Um, I'd always try to just, uh, if you're working with a BenQ or Lidon, make sure wherever you buy it specifically says BenQ or Lidon. Um, but otherwise, if it's a Samsung or a Hitachi, you can, it doesn't matter which one it says it's for, those two lasers both work in this draw, in either of those drives. Um, and uh, if you need to go to that step, if this doesn't work, uh, I've, got a, I've got another tutorial I'm going to be doing on laser replacement. Um, 
And as you can see, a link has popped up, so you can click that link and go ahead and go over to that tutorial, and that will show you how to properly replace everything. I uh, really appreciate you guys checking me out. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to leave me a comment, and I get back to you pretty quickly. Uh, and also make sure to subscribe. I've got a lot of uh, new tutorials I'm going to be doing here within the next few weeks. Uh, a lot of cool case modding tutorials and stuff as well. So definitely worth subscribing. You know, it's free and. Uh, I really enjoy seeing what you guys think about some of the things I do. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching.